Hi, how are you? Matt Watson here from CarWow. Now I thought I'd do a different video today. So what I've done is scoured the internet to find some of the worst crash tests ever performed on cars. So these are cars from the past which have been crash tested and you'll see how bad they are in an accident. Some of these cars are things that I was actually driving around in when I was younger. So yeah, I may look a little bit shocked. I'm filming it on my laptop computer. You'll join me as I'm watching it and you'll get my reaction to these videos same as you're probably going to be having at home. So let's get on with it. Whew, I'm a little bit nervous. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Okay, so this first video is a Rover 100 from 1997. Now I used to drive an earlier version of this car, so the one that I will have been driving around in will have performed worse than this. So here we go. Oh my God. Did you notice the windscreen pillar? It just folded right in, just smashing his head off it. Dead, that, that's your dead. And look at the car as well, look, it's just like buckled underneath. Yeah, we'll see it from the other angle. Look at the, the passenger smashing their head off the dash. Not as bad as the driver though. Look at it from the top, look how it just crumples. That engine is just going into the passenger area. Now this is it from the side, a side impact. Watch the windows pop out the side and the windscreen's popped out. This is awful. Basically, this car's body is just deforming. It's just deforming. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to stop for a second because I actually crashed a Mini Metro when I was a kid. It didn't perform very well at all. So I must have hit another car side on and I was doing probably when I hit 10, 15 miles an hour. I had been doing 40 bar brakes, got down to about 10, 15 and it just smashed the entire front of the car in. And I remember the gear lever was like behind me and my legs were almost around my ears because the whole engine and gearbox had been like just pushed into the car. Whew. My mum actually turned up to the scene crying because she thought I'd be dead from the devastation, but I was actually fine. So this is a Rover 100 and a Honda Jazz. So let's see what happens. Same thing again, look, over and over again, that driver's head is just smashing off the windscreen pillar. In the Honda Jazz, look at the difference in the safety of the car. That Jazz is just holding up. It's all about keeping that passenger cell intact. The Jazz does that. You can thank Euro NCAT for that. That's why cars have got a lot safer. That Rover Metro, oh, awful. Chevrolet Malibu in 2009, so this is for you American viewers, against the Chevrolet Bel Air from 1959. <laughs> I don't know why, but I think the Chevrolet Bel Air might do all right just because it'd be big, heavy, and made out of pig iron. Oh. Oh God, that's horrible. The way that roof just, look at it, look at the roof. Watch the roof. And once again, the windscreen pillar. The roof, it almost turns into a convertible. Look, the roof just, ri oh. Oh, that's horrible. Everyone loves a classic car and goes on about how lovely it is driving around in a classic car. You do not want to crash your classic car because this could happen to you. Oh, I don't think I need, I don't want to see this from inside. No, oh, oh no. Did you see just the way the, the steering wheel just went into the driver's face? And that's 35 miles an hour. Imagine if you do motorway speeds like 70. This is inside the 2009 car face into the airbag, help protecting them. Once again, passenger cell intact. Okay, now we have a Jeep Wrangler from 2019, small overlap impact at 40 miles an hour. Jeep Wrangler, modern car, should do all right. Oh dear, it rolled. Passenger cell is still intact. I think what's happened here is that because this car has a rigid axle, that front wheel sheared off and the rigid axle moved round, which caused the car to do that flip. Flipping is not great. Look at it, here it is from the front. You can see, look, yep. Yeah. So you can see the wheel get knocked off, it's pushed underneath, the axle flips the car over. So if it had normal independent suspension of a normal car rather than being an off-roader, it wouldn't have flipped over. And the bad thing about flipping over is, of course, you could just end up being shot into oncoming traffic. The actual passenger cell is pretty intact though. Oh no, he's gonna be hit by a bit of trim. Oh, thankfully no. Oh look, uh, the secondary impact when the car lands on its side. <laughs> oh dear, why am I laughing? I don't know why I'm laughing. Nervous laughter. Look at it from the front. So it's quite a tough car, but it's just that thing causing it to flip over. Now it makes me worry because I've got a Suzuki Jimny and that's got rigid axles. 
The next car is the Tata Nano from 2014. So this was the cheapest car in the world back then. I think they're around 1,500 pounds. And there's talk about bringing them to the UK, but they never officially got sold there. Yep, here we go, 40 miles an hour into a barrier. Oh no. So 2014, cars are pretty safe at that stage. This is not, there's no airbags. I don't think it's got pretensions on the seat belt by the look of it. The driver just gets smashed into the steering wheel. Look at it, does a passenger get slammed into the dashboard? Oh yes. I guess you get what you don't pay for. You get no safety at all. Look at that, look at that wheel going into, all the way into the passenger cell. Oh, that's awful. Look at it from the top. Look at that dashboard just twist and just go straight into the driver. Woof! Next car is a Citroen Saxo from the year 2000. And I actually used to drive around in one of these when I worked for a magazine called Auto Express. See what happens and what could have happened to me if I'd have crashed that little car. Oh, it's got airbags, that's all right. Oh no, oh no. Look at that. From the side impact, that's just going straight through and into the driver. That driver's side is all mashed up. Look at this, look at, oh, your arm's just battered. Your ribs are all broken. The seat just goes straight into the other seat. You're just going to be colliding with your passenger. This car, I think, scored two stars back in the year 2000, which is a, a dreadful score anyway. But back in 2000, two stars was basically like having no protection around you at all. Now we have an Isuzu D-Max Rodeo 2008. 2008 should do all right. Oh, the body just came off the chassis. That's awful. And it's bending where the doors meet. What's happening to the driver? And, and the, oh, and there's a child in the back. Yeah, it's got airbags and stuff like that, but the body's deforming really badly. Look, you can see it as well. Once again, the, the chassis is separating from the body. No passenger airbag though. Sorry you passenger. You may as well get your face smashed in. You think that something like a pickup truck would be safe because it's just big and heavy, but no, look. Oh! Yeah, here's the side impact. The driver just smacked his head onto the pillar next to him. And you can see what's happening to the kids. It looks a bit more peaceful in slow-mo. I'm sure it wouldn't feel like that in reality. Look, you can see it's dented all the structure from the side. Apparently, that only got one star in 2008. Awful. The next car is something weird. I've never seen it before. It's a Tazari Zero from 2014. Some kind of small little electric car before there were good electric cars. Didn't deform that badly. The seatbelt snapped. The seatbelt snapped. Look at this. Look, 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 look. Holy crap. You'd never expect that. It's pointless wearing one. As a result, the driver smashes his head off the windscreen. I think it bounces off the roof. So it seems like quite a tough little car, but that seatbelt snapping is awful. Nah, you're dead. You're dead there. You see the driver's head just got bang off the roof. Well, that car got one star for safety as well. I think you should have got none. Okay, next car, a Fiat Seicento from 2000. Little family hatchback. Mike's girlfriend actually had one of these. She was driving around in one. Let's see what would have happened if she'd have crashed. This is from 40 miles an hour into a deformable barrier. Should have died. Oh my, is that the worst yet? Look at it. Look, the car just bends like that in the middle. The driver just goes low down like that and then smacks its head off the steering wheel. In fact, it's like the steering wheel is jumping out at it as well, so they're coming together like that. A little baby in the back as well, I think that's done for. Oh, passenger. What, the passenger like disappears down, submarining under the seat belts. Oh God, look at the roof. Watch the roof, watch the roof. Oh, oh, and the head smashes off that windscreen pillar as well, the driver's head. Oh, oh this is sickening, this is. Roof, body just bends. Look, it bends, bends in the middle. Now let's have a look at this, a side impact. Side impact, I don't, look, do you see that? So the barrier didn't break the glass, it's the driver's head smashing off it. That was horrible. You know, driving around in these cheap little cars, not really thinking about it and then seeing what would happen if you'd had an accident in them. It's so scary. Right, so we've got a Chevrolet Malibu from 2009 against an HGV trailer with impact guards in a head-on impact. Okay, so first we're gonna actually see the test before the impact bars were fitted. So let's see what would have happened. Can't really turn anything from that angle. Oh. 
I've got to stop that. The car's just gone right underneath, and the back of the trailer is where the driver and passenger's heads are. The car's safety systems are just not being able to do anything. Decapitated. Instant death. Probably the best way, though, really. Oh, God, from inside. No. Oh, give a sec. <laughs> Uh, right, okay, um, with with the bar. God, that's freaked me out. Looks the same from behind. Oh no, the car bounced back a bit. It didn't just wedge in. This could be better. Oh my, look, the car is completely intact. Look at it, the, the passenger cell, the car safety systems can now work because it hasn't just gone underneath the trailer. That simple thing, just attached to the back of the trailer, you survive that. Look, look from the inside. I can watch that without feeling sick. <laughs> look, a split screen, watch this, watch this, watch this. Ah! The mad thing is, I want to know how long we went around having trucks like that before the safety system was fitted. It just seems so totally obvious in hindsight. I mean, that is just insane. If you're finding this all a little bit too much, um, click on the pop out banner up there to go watch a video, a really, really cool drag race video, which is one of my favorites for a bit of light relief. If you don't, just stay here because now I'm gonna show what happens if a lorry crashes into a load of cars stationary on the motorway at 44 miles an hour, so not that quick really. Apparently this is an argument for making sure that all HGVs are fitted with auto emergency braking like you get on new cars. Oh! One car goes in the other car. Oh, uh oh. That green, what's happened to that green car? It's just disintegrated. Watch the green car. It just goes underneath the other. The other one gets flipped up. And so all the crash protection now is relying on the roof where there's none. Everyone's dead. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, comment below of any kind of other videos you'd like us to do. If you want to watch some more videos, click on the windows there. And if you click on the box, you can download the CarWow app. It's completely free. You can use it to like browse all our reviews and see how much money we can save you on a new car. On average, we can save £3,600. That's right. Also, it has a special number plate reader, so you can scan any car's number plate and it'll tell you how much that car is currently worth. Download it. It's completely free.